A foreign website called Health Group shows that the mortality of Nepalese population is increasing due to neurological disorder by 57.4% by 1990. This is apparent that the need of new hospitals are high in Nepal. Acknowledging the fact, Noble Medical College has started the Institute of Neurosciences and today with me is Dr. Aip Cherian who has done MCH in Neurosurgery from CMC Velour, India and he is also the Director of Institute of Neurosciences, Noble Medical College. Let's welcome him to our show. Welcome sir. Thank you. Sir, why did you choose Biratnagar or Nepal uh, for your work destination? I mean, uh, you could have uh, settled in any of the European countries or any developed countries. Why this place? Well, uh, I've been in Nepal for 10 years now. It's my 10th year. My dad's grand uncle, Dr. Matai, he used to come here uh, in the 1960s as a neurosurgeon to the Bir Hospital. So he was instrumental in starting the neurosurgery in Nepal along with uh, Professor Gongol and then later Dr. Devkota. So after finishing my neurosurgery and vascular surgery, I, I wanted to spend six months in Nepal uh, according to my uh, father's grand uncle's wishes and that six months have uh, you know, gone on to ten years now. I'm very happy here. I feel there is a need and I feel I can do some uh, real life-changing work. Thank you. Uh, why do you uh, choose medicine or neurosurgery as your uh, part or profession? Well, um, to choose medicine, I mean, it was not, to be very frank, it was not my wish. Uh, I was always good in physics, so I wanted to be an engineer. I wanted to be in the army. Uh, but um, according to the family wishes, I took medicine. But I did not regret that and I was good with my hands. Uh, so neurosurgery was a natural choice because I thought the most challenging thing in, uh, uh, in any surgery was neurosurgery. Plus I thought I could be a good doctor. Uh, I didn't uh, have a burning desire to make money or I didn't have a burning desire to have a lot of, uh, uh, lot of things, materialistic things. I thought I could make a difference. What are your roles or uh, responsibilities as a neurosurgeon here at uh, Institute, Noble Institute of Neurosciences? Yeah, I mean, right now we are blessed with one of the best uh, uh, setups, infrastructure in the whole of Southeast Asia. So when we started uh, neurosurgery in Nepal, we started with the most basic things. But right now we have a, we have a real good infrastructure. And plus we have been assigned the role of a training center in, uh, by the Asian CNS, by the Asian Congress of Neurological Surgeons. So we perform the most difficult surgeries that are referred to us from all parts of Nepal, India. We have a lot of fellows from all over the world who come and observe us. And then we are... Uh, trying to do our part with the educations. For example, Professor Yuha is with us, who is a legend in vascular, neurovascular surgery. I teach skull base. So we have this thing called neurosurgical TV where we, we can live telecast our surgery to the whole world. So we try to give the best services to the poor, the rich, and also do our bit in education. What kind of uh, neurological treatment can we get at Noble Institute of Neurosciences? Well, uh, the easier question would be, what will you not get? <laughs> because uh, we have uh, almost the whole spectrum right now. Uh, so we do the operative suite as such has an interoperative MRI. Uh, this is the neuro suite. And then we have the OAM for every spine problems. And then we have a functional suite. We have a, a minimally invasive suite. So as I said initially, the question, the easier question would be what you will not be able to get. You invented a cisternostomy, uh, which is a new and a promising technique to replace the old uh, surgical management system for uh, severe head injuries. What is uh, this cisternostomy? Can you explain us in a brief? 
yeah see right now uh, the head injuries severe head injuries are mostly managed by the most junior residents and they are managed by uh, managed the surgical management is 100 years old the rest of neurosurgery has moved on but uh, i mean the head injuries management has never moved on because they come in the night and no senior neurosurgeon would want to address them at 2 or 2 am in the morning and since the junior most resident is doing it nobody wants to do an advanced surgical procedure but you must understand that 50% of neurosurgical patients are trauma patients so 10 years back i started addressing this problem i slowly uh, went ahead reviewed the physiology reviewed the surgical procedures and then we made a change um it has caught on now there are many places uh, many countries where i go and teach this and there are many surgeons who's reported this now we have textbook chapters we've had we have interviews from the bbc um, and we getting noticed all over the world for this procedure i'm slowly i'm sure with the results that it gives and uh, the better results that it gives i'm sure it will catch on what part of surgery takes toll on you like is physically mentally or emotionally yeah, and your surgery is a uh, um it's a it's a trade which really takes every part of it takes toll on you so to be a good surgeon one thing you need is a constant uh, practicing of skills just like a, any professional athlete would practice so most of the time i have a microscope in my room and i mm-hmm. almost for 10 minutes to 15 minutes i practice every day on uh, microvascular anastomosis and things and i I practice with both my left and right hands and keep on doing difficult skills. Another part of it is uh, the patient uh, counseling and uh, making them understanding how difficult it is for us sometimes to do things. Uh, how much ever evolved neurosurgery is sometimes there are problems which you really cannot find out an answer for. Um even in neurosurgery all over the world. so these are things which every neurosurgeon understand but the expectations that people have out of you is sometimes exceeds what you can do mm. this is another problem and well other than skills the counseling the third part is the pain you have on your failures so sometimes you try your level best and uh, there's only certain things that you can do and uh, you cannot exceed that and of course i always tell with uh, to the relatives that you cannot fight god mm. you cannot fight fate it is you you just can try your best generally all this plus of course the ad- since i am the ad- director the administration part also takes a lot of toll i mean because to maintain uh, the sanity the unity and the standards of a high class unit is very very difficult uh, on the guy sitting on the director's chair so probably this much can you highlight to our viewers uh, the importance of multidisciplinary team in a neurosurgery yeah now the every part of uh, medicine and probably everything else is narrow and deep earlier it used to be a jack of all trades that uh, anybody can do gynecology and pediatrics everything together but now neurosurgery has come to a part where there are multi specialties in neurosurgery so for example there is no more a general neurosurgeon so for uh, i deal with vascular and skull base and both are very intricately um, you know both are disciplines which uh, one needs the other and the trauma surgery that i do the cystinostomy part is uh, actually vac- vascular and uh, skull base I am doing much less spine than I used to do in the beginning. Uh other things like pediatrics or shuns or any other things that I am doing much less. So we have a spine team with a spine suit. Uh we have a skull base team, we have a vascular team, we have a trauma team. Other than that, we have the critical care team. You know, in most of the places neurosurgeons handle the critical care too, which I don't think is correct. Uh, so f- probably for the first time in nepal we have a neurocritical care team with an anesthetist from aims and anesthetist from pgi and anesthetist from indonesia 
and a general surgeon. So we have uh, this team who helps us with uh, infection control and taking care of the patients in the ICU, while neurosurgeons also contribute uh, by discussions and we keep on improving. So again, as I said, narrow and deep is much more beneficial to the patient. As neurosurgery is considered as one of the expensive treatment, so how can the poor uh, like patients can get the treatment or what provision have your hospital made for the Nepalese who are economically weak? Yeah, I mean, this is something which is a very difficult question <laughs> because you see, uh, the kind of investment needed for uh, a high-end neurosurgical setup, just like what we have done, is uh, exceeds 200 crores. So, um, if you ask me how poor patients are going to be taken care of, um, normally we would not have been able to do that, but uh, this hospital has, an, a, a, along with me and Sunil, we've taken a policy that even if the the top end part doesn't run. We, we wanted to make sure that uh, the patients in and around this place, whether it is from India or Nepal, nobody will be turned away just because they don't have uh, uh, money. So in this uh, aspect, the government of Nepal has really helped us because they've given this Vipanna scheme, and which means that most of these accidents, we can take care of them and the government gives us one lakh and we get everything into one lakh. Um, and also, when we f see that there is a patient who can be helped out and they don't have the money, we just charge them for the medicines and uh, we generally try and take care of uh, their OT charges as well as their bed charges. So while we have the most uh, uh, sophisticated equipments, we also can assure you that we're not going to turn away any patient just because he doesn't have money. Neurosurgery is also considered uh, as the sensitive area to work, like you need to operate with the sensitive part of our organs. So how do you prepare before you uh, go to the OT, operation theatre? Yeah, generally uh, when I have a big surgery, I generally like to be left alone. So I, for two or three hours, I'd generally be left alone and I would perform the surgery in my mind at least four or five times before I uh, even go and open the dura or uh, start the surgery, I would do it in my mind three or four times and see what all can go wrong. And in that time, I'm highly irritable. My team knows it. My family also knows it that I would uh, I would not like to be disturbed at all. So sometimes if I, I lock my door and I have, I just do the things that I will do in the surgery with my hands so that I close my eyes and I imagine that this thing is happening. But right now in my room, I have a stealth station, uh, which I have a PAX uh, imaging system, which can transfer all the images to a stealth station. And I can simulate a surgery with this new high setup. I can literally take off the bone and uh, go into the part where the lesion is and perform, virtually perform that surgery. Uh, but whatever, I would, if you ask me how I prepare, I would like to be left alone for maybe two or three hours before I walk into the theater. You have walked with many uh, countries around the globe. What differences uh, you could find in the hospitals in Nepal or in the foreign, in the health sector? Yeah, I mean, if you talk about United States or Europe, uh, well, of course, the, the facilities are much better. Uh, but I have, uh, I almost every year I go to Africa and I operate. And there it's grassroots level. It's much, much worse than uh, what we have in Nepal. There are some countries don't even have neurosurgeons. So we just went to Kenya about two months back. We were in Kenya, we were operating. And uh, uh, the levels are much worse than what we have right now in uh, the low cost setup. Forget the high cost setup. But what we have done is, um, in here, what we have done right now is we've all the amalgamation of everything that I've seen in many places in Europe and uh, United States, I have brought it here. And so we have a combination of everything together in this new brain suite. You will see that. So Nepal right now, I'm sure, will be on the neurosurgical map as not just a place where people can come in for uh, free service, but 
very soon it will be a place where people from all over the world will come for treatment being a neurosurgeon and the director of the institute itself at the same time can you explain your uh, day to day life at hospital being a neurosurgeon is almost uh, much much more easier than being the director so i don't envy sunil's uh, job being the director of the hospital so being a neurosurgeon um well i just have to operate and start to see patients and uh, i have to do my job well and i can control it but sometimes being a director is very difficult because you cannot control what uh, others do and whenever you try to control it it will uh, result in uh, either bad blood or uh, i mean in short you cannot uh, turn others the way you want so i find it much more difficult to manage uh, other things than to be a neurosurgeon i wish some day one of my boys would take over as the director and i can just do my surgeries that said uh well weekly just like any other neurosurgeon i i try and uh, give as much as time i can for home but uh, always that uh, ends up inadequate okay. uh thank you sir for your time it was pleasure talking to you It was a pleasure talking to you too. Thank you.